Welcome to a new series of sports and exotic car where we're going to re-examine and re-evaluate some of the most exciting, rarest and most iconic performance cars of all time. There will be no regurgitating of received wisdom, no rose tinted glasses. We're going to find out if these models are worthy of the hype and the reverence. To start we are going full JDM, Group A royalty and right now just about the hottest car on planet earth. This is the R32 Nissan Skyline GTR. What a place to start for this series presented by Goldwing Motorcars. Nissan's wild coupe emerged into a world of 911s that hadn't even adopted independent rear suspension and Ferraris with strakes and attitude, but no real substance. Armed with twin turbochargers, intelligent four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering and developed with obsessive attention to detail, the GTR was a whole different animal and Nissan wanted to prove it. So why is this car such a legend? And I have to admit, I am a massive JDM fanboy, so this is a big moment for me. I've never driven an R32. But the root of its legend is motorsport, like so many of these cars that become icons. This car was built to Group A regulations, so everyone tells you about Group B, and it did create some monsters, but no one really benefited from it, you know? But Group A, this was Group A. And for a Group A car to be homologated, you had to build two and a half thousand units of a similar car in 12 consecutive months. So you had to build proper cars, is what I'm telling you. Cars that real people could afford and buy. The cars born from Group A would make a series all of their own. But for me, the Skyline is the Group A poster car. In Japan, it cleaned up in the JTCC, winning four consecutive titles from 1990 to 93 and taking victory in every single round. In Australia, it destroyed the local competition in the supercar series and was ultimately banned. Nissan might have only offered the Skyline GTR in its home market plus Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia and New Zealand, but its game-changing performance reverberated throughout the world. Its legend is rooted in that success, in that unbeatable, fire-breathing monster technology used and harnessed to basically decimate opposition. That's why this car became Godzilla, because it just ate everything. Nissan's Group A master plan involved a 2.6-litre straight-six twin-turbocharged engine, electronically controlled four-wheel drive plus four-wheel steering. The Atessa ETS four-wheel drive used a hydraulically actuated multi-plate clutch center differential and rear LSD and takes inputs from its sensors at 10 times per second. Under normal conditions, this allows the R32 to essentially be 100% rear drive. However, as it detects slip, then the center clutch starts to close and send torque forwards. The V-Spec cars added an E-diff for the rear axle too. The aim was to create the balance and natural feel of a rear drive car with supreme traction. When you add up everything that made this car special, the chassis, the engine, the balance, the incredibly sophisticated technology, it doesn't really add up to much in 2023. This was not a lightweight car, it's over 1400 kilos, 276 horsepower under that Japanese manufacturer agreement. It just doesn't sound that exciting, does it, by our standards? But, of course, another huge part of the legend is that none of these things stayed at 276 horsepower. There's so much more available and you don't have to look very hard to find it. <laughs> You can be that person, the one who scours the world for a standard Nissan Skyline GTR. In fact, this show sponsor, Peter Kumar at Goldwing Motor Cars, will do it for you. Give him a call. To be honest, I was tempted to locate one myself for this video, but then I thought if we're going to represent the Skyline properly, we have to reflect reality. And the reality is an untuned Skyline is an unfulfilled Skyline. This car was supplied to us by James Auto Finesse, a detailing company that do fantastic work. And not only is it immaculate, but it has a really nice level of modification. 
So what have we got? Well, the standard car's 16 inch wheels have been replaced by these Ray's Volk T37s wrapped in extreme Toyo R888R tires. Also has BC Racing coilovers, adjustable and hard race adjustable suspension arms too. And really important on this car, it has a high cast delete kit. A number of people, a lot of owners, they find the rear wheel steering system a little bit unnatural, so they decide to lock it out, which is just what the Australians did to create those incredibly dominant race cars. The engine on this car is really tasty without getting completely silly. So we have all the good stuff, an Apexi induction kit, full exhaust system, Fujitsubu on this car. We've got uprated HKS turbos, injectors, cam, sequential blow off valve, all the good stuff. We also have a big Mishimoto alloy rad because as we up the power we need to increase the cooling as well the result is 477 horsepower it doesn't sound crazy but it's 200 more than standard and it is plenty i think for this car and of course we're going full jdm so we have a transparent nitto cam belt cover because if you're gonna go jdm you have to go all in but the point is the standard car is really just a gateway drug and there's so much potential with this car to pick and choose components and create any owner's dream version of the Skyline. We fetishize originality so often, but this is a car that almost demands to be modified. Let's break down everything you think you know about the Skyline. Take each element one at a time and see if it holds true. I guess the first thing is that it's a driver's car that almost drives itself that basically if you drive one of these quickly you're cheating well let's take that for a start even at low speed it's instantly apparent that isn't the case there's so much physicality in this and part of that is because new cars have become so much more assisted in everything they do but even for a car of this vintage the weightiness of the steering the sort of heft of every single control and the way the engine feels it's very very mechanical in nature and it requires input and effort it's not a car you can just jump in and drive quickly without really thinking it forces you to be physically involved in the process which is fantastic i guess the next big cliche is that the skyline is just an absolute missile along the ground and that one does hold a bit more water like i say you need to understand the way this car works and you have to be on top of it but once you've got your head around the four-wheel drive system, the fact it's going to ask you to really correct the car when it wants to slide and be on top of it and be prepared to manipulate it, the speed you can wrangle out of it is really, really impressive. But the one thing that the Skyline is really known for is its engine, the RB26. And I think it's fair to say that is another area where the reality more than lives up to the legend. The RB26 engine is a truly wonderful motor and is celebrated for its inherent strength and tunability. It features an iron block, aluminium four valve head and six individual throttle bodies. With twin turbos running 10 psi of boost, it may have left the factory with only 276 horsepower, but as we've discovered, that was usually just the beginning. Imagine that you didn't know anything about this car. You just dropped into it to drive. And I think that's probably the biggest thing we can do in this video is actually just describe what it's like to drive. Forget the legend and get stuck in. The thing that stands out is that physicality and the feel. I love the steering. The five-speed box, really, really nice. It's not super snickety, but it's got this just the perfect amount of heft and all of the controls are so well matched to each other from the steering to the gearbox we've got upgraded brakes here but they've got that same consistency engineered feel about them which i love the biggest thing to me is how agile and lightweight it feels for such a pretty hefty car there's a sort of intensity to it that it's out of time almost. It doesn't feel like a car of this vintage. There's just too much control, too much performance, and this sort of absolute focus on performance, which comes from the motorsport side of things. I really like it. It's 
a bit like a new GTR, in the core of its very being, it's about going fast. But that doesn't mean it can't entertain. That four-wheel drive system might ultimately add traction and stability, but the rear bias is clear to feel, always. This is a car that loves to slide and feels so alive in your hands. It starts to go quick and you do feel that it's got a bit more weight than something like a Mitsubishi Evo. It doesn't have that incredible instant razor turn in. But that actually gives you confidence. You have to be a bit more deliberate with it. But that added weight, that slightly slowed down response gives you real confidence to attack and lean on the grip. The overriding impression basically is of an incredibly cohesive car that gives you as the driver not free reign to just drive like an idiot, but the foundation to really express yourself. The four wheel drive system is great, but it still feels like it reacts to your inputs. It's not just working to its own brief. You feel like you're making a difference, you're manipulating the car, you're stroking it along or hustling it. Whatever you choose to do has a direct effect on the car. I think maybe the best thing about this car is it's not about the perfect day, the perfect road. We've lucked out and we've got that today. But everything about it is designed to make every day the perfect day, every road the perfect road, every track the perfect track. You can enjoy this all the time and forever. And why wouldn't you? It ticks so many boxes, this car. The technology and the awesome acronyms could only have come from Japan. The fact it was banned to end its dominance on the track is irresistible. I love the tuner culture too. Mostly though, I just love its exuberance, its ruthlessly focused character, and well, the flames don't do any harm either. The R32 GTR driving experience is timeless. It was a monster then, and it's a monster now. All hail Godzilla. Peter Kumar's dream when creating Goldwing Motorcars was to focus on each customer's unique story and fulfill their ultimate ambitions. For over 35 years, their flawless record shows that Goldwing Motorcars goes above and beyond. So if you're looking to buy or sell, head to goldwingmotorcars.com for a truly personal experience. Better yet, give Peter a call and start your journey today.